So in the last step, we learned how to create a backend on slash GraphQL. In this step, we're going to learn how to link that backend to a frontend. So we've created a pre-made frontend for you. Uh, you can find the link below. We also have instructions on how to clone it. So you'll need to clone that repo. You'll need to go in and run npm install. And then you should be ready to follow along. All right, so once you download the repo, you'll need to open up two files. You'll need to open up app.js and to do app.js. So let's get started with app.js. You can see that it says your endpoint here. The first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to grab the endpoint from our slash GraphQL, from our slash GraphQL dashboard. Uh, you can find it right here. So let's copy that. Let's paste it here and save. And now we're connected to our backend. So you'll notice that we're using Apollo client, right? Uh, we're passing in this link to Apollo client. Apollo client is a GraphQL client that gives us a bunch of cool features like caching, stuff like that. Uh, we could recommend you use that with dgraph. All right, so now you can actually run npm start and you can actually see the app in action. All right, so right now there's not much. Nothing happens when you add a task. It's very straightforward. The first thing we need to do is we will need to go to to do app.js and right here, run, right under the state, we're going to add a task to actually pull these ta the tasks from the database. Okay. So you can see we're using the use query hook that we're importing from Apollo client. And this returns three different values. This is lo returns loading, which lets us know if it's still loading the query or not. Returns an error. We're going to ignore this for now. But this is obviously for if there's an error with your query. And it returns the data. This is actually going to contain the to-do items in our data. So this is a simple query. We're going to query the task. We're going to turn the ID and the title. All right. We're pulling all of, because we're not passing in an argument here, that means we're pulling all of the tasks in our database. OK, so we have that. The second step will be to, so you can see that shown to-dos, that's what's being used across this file to actually show the to-dos. So this is the list of to-dos. We need to somehow pull the data that we have here and put it into shown to-dos. So for that, we're going to use an effect. All right, this is imported from React. So an effect, pretty much we're telling it that every time data is changed, the second argument, we set shown to-dos. And if we're loading, that means we don't have any data yet. We'll return an empty array. Otherwise, we'll return data.query task which is the tasks that we're returning from the front end, from the back end. Okay, so if you save here and you switch over, you'll see that there's still nothing. That's because we don't have anything in our back end. So we need to be able to add some tasks. So that's the next step. So what we're gonna do is under this, we're gonna create a new mutation. So this is another hook from the React to Apollo. And it's returning a function. And we're passing in a mutation. You can notice here that we're actually naming the function. And we are passing in a variable. This is going to make it easier for us to just pass in variables without creating a new query. So what are we doing here? We're adding a task. This is the task object. We're setting its title. That's all we really care about right now. Completed is false. And then we're creating a user object inline. So right now, this isn't important. But for the next tutorial, this is going to be much more important. So for now, you can ignore this. We will come back to this later. Uh, and then we're returning the task ID and the title. Uh, this isn't needed. This is just to show you that it's possible. All right, so we have this. But we haven't told React how to actually use this function. So what we need to do is we need to go down to this add uh, function over here. We're going to call the add task that we just created. And we're going to pass in a variable. All right. So we're going to pass in this title as a variable. OK. So now we go back. 
Let's add a task. We don't see it. That's strange. Let's refresh this page. Now we see it. So what's going on? So what's actually going on is that Apollo client caches these queries. So it pulls the queries in the beginning. There's only zero items, right? Once we add a new item, it doesn't actually refresh. We need some way to actually tell it to refresh itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the actual query from this use query. We're going to go up here. We're going to create a constant. Right? And then we're going to paste this here. And obviously, we'll need to pass this new constant to here. So the second step, and this is the most important step that actually tells Apollo client to actually refresh, is we're going to tell it to refetch queries. We're going to pass in the query. And we're going to pass in this query that we posted up here. So what's happening here is we're telling Apollo, every time we call add task, invalidate the cache for this query, refetch it again. So now we'll save, we'll go back to the app, and let's see what happens. So task two, we'll add this, and it's added right away. And there you go. It was that easy to link our slash GraphQL backend to a front end. That concludes our tutorial series. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below or visit discuss.dgraph.io. We'd be more than happy to answer them. Make sure to subscribe because we're going to be having a lot more tutorial series coming up. And thank you for watching.